Hello everyone. In the last session, we discussed about the, the working of DC generator as well as DC motor. In the DC generator and DC motor, to work as a DC motor or DC generator, the commutator is a very very important part. It is very very important and due to the commutator only, we can analyze the DC machine working. It may be the DC generator or it may be the DC motor. So here the commutator. Once again, recollect the, all the commutator things. The first commutator generally it is a mechanically rotating uncontrolled rectifier or inverter. Once again, because it is rotating with the rotor only and it is a uncontrolled, it doesn't have any controlling and it is acts as rectifier as well as inverter. Here, generally, the commutator acts as a rectifier. In which case, for which case, when, when, it, when it will take the mechanical power and not rectifier, it will take the mechanical power and it will give the electrical power. That time, commutator will act as a rectifier. And it will act as an inverter, in which case it acts as inverter, inverter means which converts DC to AC. It will take electrical power that time and it should give the mechanical power. It should give the mechanical power. That means here generation of electrical power means whenever it acts as a DC generator. And it, it, it generates mechanical power means whenever it is acts as a DC motor. DC motor. So otherwise it is not possible because the most important thing is although it is a DC DC machine but armature conductors have AC quantities that is very very important armature having AC quantities that means armature quantities means it has two, two things armature will develop EMF one thing that it develop current it is a AC current AC EMF and it is the AC current so that is that's why it is very very important the conversion from AC to DC from DC to AC only done by the commutator okay yeah and we have very much important applications with that those are it makes the armature MMF so armature has some MMF that means we can call it as armature field also stationary with respect to the state R with respect to the state R so that two fields are stationary with respect to the state R two fields are stationary with respect to the state R for the production of unidirectional torque so the most important thing we will analyze how it is possible means the most important thing the armature MMF armature MMF means here armature means keep in your mind always it is a rotor yeah and field MMF or field flux the field means it should be the stator both armature MMF stator MMF will be both will be the stationary it should be the stationary sorry rotates with the same speed rotates with same speed it should be rotates that is a very very important thing okay then rotates with the same speed that is only the unidirectional torque will be produced otherwise then torque will become zero the torque what is the torque unidirectional torque will be produced okay so that's why the rotation is very very important part here okay so it will do this work is also done by the commutator only commutator is also done this work to produce a unidirectional torque okay commutator not only acts as a rectifier as well as inverter but also it will be acts but also it will be acts as produce producing the unidirectional torque okay right next next we will discuss how the stator and rotor will be rotates so generally look at here here 
this part is the generally this part is the outside part we can name it as the stator is nothing but it is the field we can name it as the field so it is useful for field so we can stator or field okay so to understand easily just i am considering having the stator have only two poles that is the one pole is north and another pole is south these two poles are generally just take it and i i, I take it okay next here we have in the dc machine we have the conductors the conductors having this side conductors always upside because at north pole always armature conductor will be upside outside and at the south pole south pole the armature conductors current must be inner side okay what is this meaning means the cross means this is the meaning upside or outside what is the dot dot means here dot means downwards dot means downwards okay yeah downside so here so here whenever cross is this side dot is that side then armature also will generate some electromagnetic poles that poles is by using the right hand thumb rule the pole generation is done by the pole are generated right hand thumb rule so by that right hand thumb rule right hand thumb rule then whenever cross is like this dot is like this here a pole will be generated that will be sorry this will be south pole and this will be the north pole this will be south pole and this will be the north pole so whenever the south pole is like this north pole is like this the flux lines always travels from north pole and flux lines will always entering the south pole like this that means these flux lines north will emits flux lines and south will absorb the flux lines so these are the emitting flux lines and these are the absorbing flux lines and here just to observe here here in case of the stator stator means north pole emits flux lines here south poles take the flux lines so if you if you observe here the north pole uh, sorry for the where the poles is available that axis is called as the direct axis it's called as the direct axis where we doesn't have any poles called as a quadrature axis so this is the direct axis and we have the poles direction is here the quadrature axis quadrature axis yes yeah so between this direct axis poles and quadrature axis poles we have the 90 degrees here so so just observing this just look at here in dc machines always del value will be 90 degrees what is the del del we can call it as the load angle del we can call it as the load angle so this load angle will be having the 90 degrees here okay 90 degrees here so the most important thing in the dc machines having load angle value is 90 degrees what is the load angle load angle means it is the angle between stator mmf and the rotor mmf stator having some magnetic flux motive force and it also having the rotor mmf rotor mmf okay here next this is for the single thing if the four poles are available this is for the two poles case this is for the two poles case if the same thing if you are using the four poles so look at here this is the field stationary part it has four poles one is north south north south and these are the conductors across north we have cross across north we have cos across south we have dot across south we have dot poles so now here also if you observe here this is called as the quadrature axis so this is called as the direct axis d axis we can name it as and in between these we have in between these we have the another axis that
that axis C is called as quadrature axis. So always in between quadrature axis, always the most important thing, direct axis and quadrature axis we have 90 degrees. The most important thing is direct axis and quadrature axis is 90 degrees. So, so just observing here, just observe here, so there is an angle between 90 degrees. So electrical angle is different from the mechanical angle. So generally we can write electrical angle is like this P by 2 theta mechanical angle. Yeah. How many poles are available? Theta electrical equal here 4 poles by 2 equal theta mechanical. So here 2, 2 means theta mechanical is 360 and theta electrical is 720 and each pole having each pole having 180 degrees angle each pole having the 180 degrees angle because theta electrical for this is for four poles and this is for one pole it is a 180 degree. that's why for pole also it is the load angle so this is also a very very important thing okay so this is about the load angle formation and the relation between the stator MMF and the rotor MMF. Okay, so this is about working of the commutator and the stator MMF, uh, field MMF and the armature MMF relation between both the things. Okay, I hope all of you understand the session. Thank you.